Hello, and it's Miss Shante here at Manorville Public Library, and we're going to read some more of Little House on the Prairie by Laura Ingalls. And today we're going to start with Chapter 4 Prairie Day. Soft, wickering, with a close to Laura's ear, the grain rustled into the feed box. Pa was giving Pet and Patty their breakfast. Back, Pet, don't be greedy, he said. You know it's Patty's turn. Patty stomped her foot and nickered. Now, Patty, keep your own end of the box, said Pa. This is for Pet. And then a little squeal from Patty. Ha! <laughs> Got nipped, didn't you? Pop said. And served you right. I told you to eat your own corn. Mary and Laura looked at each other and laughed. They could smell bacon and coffee and hear pancakes sizzling. And they scrambled out of their bed. Mary dressed herself all but the middle button. Laura buttoned the one for that one for her. Then Mary buttoned Laura all the way up the back. They washed their hands and their face in the tin wash pan on the wagon step. Ma combed every snarl out of their hair while Pa brought fresh water from the creek. Then they sat on the clean grass and ate pancakes and bacon and molasses from the tin plates in their laps. All around them shadows were moving over and waving grasses while the sun rose. Meadow larks were springing straight up from the bellows of grass into the high clear sky singing as they went Small pearly clouds drifted in the distance, blueness overhead. In all the weed tops, tiny birds were singing and singing in tiny voices. Pa said they were Dick Crussels. Dicky Dicky, Laura called back to them. Dicky Bird, eat your breakfast, Laura, Ma said. You must mind your manners, even if we are a hundred miles from nowhere. Pa said mildly, it's only 40 miles to Independence, Caroline. And no doubt there's a neighbor or two near, nearer than that. 40 miles then, Ma agreed, but whether or no, it isn't good manners to sing at the table. Or when you're eating, she added, because there was no table. There was only an enormous empty prairie with grasses blowing in the waves of light and shadow across it. And the great blue sky above it, the birds flying up from it and singing with joy because the sun was shining and on the whole enormous prairie there was no sign that any human being had ever been there. In all that space of land and sky stood a lonely small covered wagon and close to it sat Pa and Ma and Laura and Mary and baby Carrie eating their breakfast. The Mustangs munched their corn and Jack sat still, trying hard not to beg. Laura was not allowed to feed him while she ate, but she saved bits for him and Ma made him a big pancake just for Jack of the last of the batter. Rabbits were everywhere in the grass and thousands of prairie chickens. But Jack could not hunt his breakfast that day. 
Pa was going hunting and Jack must guard the camp. First, Pa put Pet and Patty on their picket lines. Then he took the wooden tub from the side of the wagon and filled it with water from the creek. Ma was going to do the dish, do the washing. Then Pa stuck his sharp hatchet in his belt and he hung his powder horn beside the hatchet. He put a patch box in the bullet pouch in his pocket and he took his gun in his arm. He said to Ma, Take your time, Caroline. We won't move the wagon until we want to. We've got all the time there is. He went away for a little while, and they could see the upper part of him above the tall grasses, going away and growing smaller. Then he went out of sight, and the prairie was empty. Mary and Laura washed the dishes while Ma made the beds in the wagon. They put the clean dishes neatly in their boxes, and they picked up every scrap twig and put it in the fire, and they stacked the wood against the wagon wheel, and everything about camp was tidy. Ma brought the wooden blanket of soft soap from the wagon. She knelt up she knelt up her skirts and rolled up her sleeves and she knelt by the tub of, on the grass. She washed sheets and pillowcases and white under things. She washed dresses and skirts and she rinsed them in clear water and spread them on the clean grass to dry in the sun. Mary and Laura were exploring. They must not go far from the wagon but it was fun to run through the tall grass. In the sunshine and wind, huge rabbits bounced away before them. Birds fluttered up and shut, settled again. The tiny dicky birds were everywhere, and their tiny nests were in the tall weeds, and everywhere there was little brown striped gophers. These little critters looked soft as velvet. They had bright round eyes and crinkling noses and wee paws. They popped out of the holes in the ground and they stood up to look at Mary and Laura. Their hind legs folded behind their hunches, their little paws folded tight to their chest, and they looked exactly like bits of dead wood sticking out of the ground, only their bright eyes were glittering. Mary and Laura wanted to catch one, to take it to Ma again and again, almost had one. The gopher would stand perfectly still until you were sure you had him this time, and then as you touched him, he wasn't there. There was only his round hole in the ground. Laura ran and ran and couldn't catch one. Mary sat perfectly still beside a hole waiting for one to come up. And just beyond her reach, Gopher scampered merrily and Gopher sat up and looked at her. Not one even came out of that hole. Once a shadow floated across the grass and every gopher vanished. A hawk was sailing overhead. It was so close that Laura saw it, its cruel, round eye turned downward to look at her. She, she saw its sharp beak and its savage claws curled ready to bounce, but the hawk saw nothing but Laura and Mary and round empty holes in the ground. It sailed away, looking elsewhere for its dinner. Even all the little gophers came up again, and it was nearly noon 
when the sun was almost overhead, so Laura and Mary picked flowers from the weeds, and they took the flowers to Ma. Instead of a gopher, Ma was folding the dry clothes. The little panties and petticoats were white, whiter than snow, warm from the sun and smelling like the grass. Ma laid them in the wagon and took the flowers. She admired equally the flowers that Laura gave her and the flowers that Mary gave her, and she put them together in a tin. With a cup full of water, she set them on the wagon step to make the camp pretty, and then she split two cold corn cakes and spread them with molasses. She gave one to Mary and one to Laura. That was their dinner, and it was very good. Where's a papoose, Ma? Laura asked. Don't speak with your mouth full, Laura, said Ma. So Laura chewed and swallowed, and she said, I want to see a papoose. Mercy on us, Ma said. Whatever makes you want to see Indians? We will see enough of them, more than we want to. I wouldn't wonder. They wouldn't hurt us, would they? Mary asked. Mary was always good. She never spoke with her mouth full. No, Ma said. Don't get s such an idea in your head. Why don't you like Indians, Ma? Asked Laura, and she caught a drip of molasses with her tongue. I just don't like them. I don't. And don't lick your fingers, Laura, said Ma. This is Indian country, isn't it? What did we come to our what did we come to our country for if you don't like them? Ma said she didn't know whether this was Indian country or not. She didn't know whether Kansas where the Kansas line was, but whether or no, the Indians would not be here long. Pa had word from a man in Washington that the Indian territory would be open to settlers soon. It might already be open to settlers. They could not know because Washington was so far away. Then Ma took the Cesare out of the wagon and heated it on the fire. And she sprinkled a dress for Mary and a dress for Laura with a little dress for baby Carrie and her own sprigged calico. She spread a blanket and a sheet on the wagon seat, and she ironed the dresses. Baby Carrie slept in the wagon. Laura and Mary and Jack laid on the shady grass beside it, because now that the sunshine was hot, Jack's mouth was open, and his red tongue hung out. His eyes blinked sleepily. Ma hummed softly to herself, while the iron smoothed all the wrinkles out of the little dresses all around them to the edge of the world. There was nothing but grass waving in the wind. Far overhead, a few white puffs of cloud sailed in the thin blue air. Laura was very happy. The wind sang a low rustling song in the grass. Grasshoppers rasping quivered up from the immense prairie. A buzzing came faintly from all the trees in the creek bottom, but all those sounds made a great, warm, happy silence. Laura had never seen a place liked, she liked so much as this place. She didn't know she had gone to sleep until she woke up. Jack was on his feet, wagging his stumpy tail. The sun was low, and Pa was coming across the prairie. Laura jumped up and ran, and his long shadow stretched to meet her in the waving grass. 
he held up again in his hand for her to see. He had a rabbit, the largest rabbit she had ever seen, and two plump prairie hens. Laura jumped up and down and clapped her hands and squealed, and she caught hold of his other sleeve and hippity-hopped through the tall grass behind him. This country's cram-jammed with game, he told her. I saw fifty deer if I saw one, and antelope and squirrel, rabbit, birds of all kinds. Their creek's full of fish, he said to Ma. I tell you, Caroline, there's everything we want here. We can live like kings. That was wonderful supper. They sat by the campfire and ate the tender, savory, flavorful meat until they could eat no more. Then at last, Laura set down her plate. She sighed with contentment. She didn't want anything more in the world. The last color was fading from the enormous sky and all the level land was shadowy. The warmth of the fire was pleasant because the night wind was cool. Fiona birds called sadly from the woods down by the creek for a little while. A mockingbird sang, and then the stars came out and the birds were still. Softly, Pa's fiddle sang in the starlight. Sometimes he sang a little, and sometimes the fiddle sang alone. Sweet and thin and far away, the fiddle went on singing. None knew thee but to love thee, thou dear one of my heart. The large bright stars hung down from the sky. Lower and lower they came, quivering with music. Laura gasped, oh, and Ma came quickly. What is it, Laura? She asked, and Laura whispered, The stars are singing. You've been asleep, said Ma. It's only the fiddle. It's time little girls were in bed. She undressed Laura in the firelight and put her nightgown on and tied her nightcap and tucked her into bed but the fiddle was still singing in the starlight, and the night was full of music, and Laura was sure that part of it came from the great bright stars swinging so low above the prairie. Tune in next time for more of the story. See you later.